trying times for our city approaches as we're about to take on our first winter here in Manor Lords. Part 3 on our first look of the Early Access version out on April 26th for everyone. It's looking beautiful. It's a gorgeous game and it's got some good challenge to it as well. I'm very excited, almost overwhelmed at all the different things that we want to do in this game. Of course, combat and raising armies and also building multiple be beautiful cities and connecting them all together, building trade and much, much more. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and also turn on that notification bell so YouTube can notify you much, much more of manor lords we finished our beautiful church we're starting to build some new homes here and we got our first winter right around the corner as we've got a lot of people coming on in and starting to uh really uh move the city forward it's been a great time so far and i've really enjoyed it and look at those gorgeous fall colors and look at this with all, all the uh, hud on look at how amazing this game looks i mean it's just unbelievable something about it just hits different all right welcome back good to see everybody locked in and ready for more Let's continue on with more Manor Lords. So we're going to continue to build these homes here until they're complete. We also have plenty of uh, wood to do so, and we're also starting to make planks too. So as we get each and every new family in the city, we're going to add them to doing things like foraging, which is almost at the end of its season, probably, uh, yeah, it looks like December. That's when it'll end. We're now more than likely in mid-November as we just completed the church after the turn of the uh, month there. Got a few more buildings coming in, like a woodcutter's lodge that's being moved around, and so that way we should be able to make a little bit more room for our homes and other businesses. And, uh, yeah, we're actually going to build, I think, oh yeah, we got our hitching post here and here that we're going to build, and then also some things that'll be scooted around by our oxen. So let's go ahead and maybe think about what we're going to do next. Uh, I think we're going to add some more roads just to prepare for uh, the eventual uh, expansion of the city. A great amount of territory here to also expand the village and uh, really make something beautiful. Let's go ahead and make a little road, meow. And see if we can connect to the back of those homes. Just like this. Pretty. Oh, there we go. All right, very nice. Now we're also gonna build some homes here and then we'll probably continue on with making them a different direction this way, just to add some variety. But all these plots are important because of course we need to get chickens and sheep and some of the other things that are needed for advanced production. So let's speed up time as we wait for the masses to finish all their work. Got ourselves uh, 11 homes in total. Mm. And 58% on the approval. Whoa. Uh-oh, what was that? A bandit camp was sighted again. Oh, man, they're spreading like crazy. Uh, looks like it's far away from us, so that's okay. But eventually we'll have to deal with that threat. We're very uh, weak right now, and we don't want to advance too quickly into enemy territory. We're gonna build this village and start initiating trade and make sure we've got quite a few people to join the militia. And we can certainly protect ourselves now with a small uh, militia, but we gotta go on the attack and that's gonna take greater numbers than the defender. Uh, we got a stone cutter camp here ready to go. Got hunting going on too. Got a mining pit there for iron ore and also a uh, mining pit there for clay. And that clay will go towards some other stuff too. So yeah, all those in conjunction with the a little bit of berry deposits there. And, uh-oh, very uh, rich deposit of animals that is uh, probably going to need to be shut down. Ooh. All right, as we level up, too, we'll be able to go to the development screen and get some more stuff from that. And we'll have to see if we can uh, maybe develop some more things for our city from that screen. Let's see. We have got our army construction. Uh-oh. And we're running out of fuel. Eh, we're okay, actually. We just moved this building, and let's make that a high priority, so that way we can keep making more. We'll be all right. We're okay. So yeah, research. We got to do a little, not research, but really more like unlocking things through our diplomacy. We've got our treasury, king's favor, influence, all that will be important, but also our development, very important too. So we're going down uh, beekeeping. That's something that'll probably be better next year, but uh, at least we got it, and we can build it, and we can get those structures done ready for the spring. Well, it looks like we can also do trapping. Enables hunters to skillfully lay traps in the forest, which gives a passive income of meat. Ah, that's perfect if we've got hunting going on, too. So we'll probably do that next. I wanted to go down beekeeping to try to give us a variety of food rather than doubling down on what we already had. But, yeah, pelt extraction and other things will get us more resources. No policy signed. No production yet at the moment. We've got to do a lot more things before we can get down that uh, development tree, and that's going to be important. Man, even more music now? Gorgeous! I love it. Alright, plot number one complete. Well, another one. Level one complete. Two more to go there. 
on that street. While asking for the uh, woodcutter lodge to be completed with the highest of urgency. So we can keep on making wood. And hopefully somebody will move in shortly. And our approval rating now at 62%. Church level, plus three. Market food variety, plus three. That's great. We can also upgrade the church eventually, I believe. And we'll see how that goes. Hitching posts are locked in. Supply there will have to be moved over to a storehouse or whatnot. Something like that. We'll have to move that there. Actually, I think the uh, log here will have to be stored at the logging camp, but we'll see what they do to move it. Or it'll just be used when we move our construction to the uh, woodcutter's lodge, which already has the log that it needs. So now we just need somebody to build. Oh, look at the smoke coming through. And there's our builders. Excellent. Exactly what we needed. Okay. Ah, beautiful to see that we've got plus 14 homes there. Plus 2. 14 plus 2 on that. And finally, somebody to do some cutting. Seasonal resources. Some resources will disappear when it's getting cold and reappear again in the spring. That's probably a goodbye to the berries. Wait until that's depleted. And let's go back a little bit on the hunting then. Just because of that population. We don't want to take everything yet. Ah, looks like somebody just joined too. Fantastic. We'll get a couple people on wood cutting then. So we got a family and we got somebody from that other workplace. Good. Now we got to do is start generating coin. Your personal money, usually collected from taxes, can be used for diplomacy. Um, we can also hire between mercenaries, settling. Not bad. Build a manor to enable taxation in any controlled region. That's where we're going to get our money. Now we need to get a little bit more uh, materials produced, but we should be able to build our manor shortly. And now that we got the church there and the happiness from that, we could definitely fortify our position. We could probably build a manor up here. That would look beautiful. That's going to be very important for us. Oh, place it on empty claim territory in order to settle it. Empty claim territory. Can we start a new city? Ah, we need 250 gold then. So that'll be our goal then if we want to expand, is to do that. We'll have to continue to produce... Uh, Planks and whatnot for the uh, planks, and also we're going to need stone for the manor to be built for us. Right now we're going to double down on the logging, though, or the firewood making, as it's now winter. And here it comes. The music will change. Everything comes into question. Can we survive our first winter in Manor Lords? Construction complete. Again, of another home. And we're down to the last one. Building the final one there. Granaries. Resource stolen by bandits still. They keep harassing us. We're going to do something about them. Don't you worry. We'll get them. Let's cut back on the storehouse by one. Let's try to put them here in this uh, saw pit. We're going to try to make some planks. And then we're going to get some people in the stone mine too. Alright, I don't think the Forger will be able to do much more. We do need one person assigned to the Forger in order to uh, continue selling what we've already got. Go back up here. So we have a little bit still in supply, so we have to have somebody assigned so that way they work at the actual uh, village stall, the food stall. And same with the Hunter. If we can get one. It looks like they sell multiple things. So we really only need one. Why do I have to Berries and meat, yeah. Logs, okay. Looks like the granary will do that as well.
And now we're doing some mining too. We'll have our manor up in no time. That'll be our goal today is to try to build that and then also start down the path of getting all the money that we need in order to expand our influence, our regions, our reach, our power. It's cool to hear the marketeers just kind of shouting out. Let's go back to our kingdom here, our city. Just watch everything go. It's a few glitches here and there, but honestly, this is... Uh, Nothing in comparison to uh, what will lie in store for us down the uh, road map, too. Plus, if you have any sort of issues like this, I think they're completely minor and might just take tweaking in between. I'll make sure I take a look at those and see if there's anything conflicting and or might be resolved before the actual release itself. So some of these things are really to be taken lightly as uh, they'll be top priorities for the developer. And there's quite a lot of other pressing issues to address, I'm sure. Hmm. 20 large shields, 20 spears have been delivered. So we got enough for 40 people in the military. Or, well, 40 items, so we got 20 that we can do. Or we could give some people a shield and some people a spear and tell them to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Gonna need a lot more people before we build up that military. Those pesky bandits. Those are gonna be our first target. Wow, look at this, plus 73 now. The market variety and the church level plus eight. Look at that. Apparently homelessness plus one, but I, that should have never been a problem. Honestly, we've got, we've got so many homes. We really do. There's nobody living in some of these. Not even close to any sort of homelessness. Now we're into January, the month of December behind us. And uh, spring will start in March. Shouldn't I have the dinkier church? There, I want that. I want that one. Give me that one. Low population growth for neutral approval. Really? 60% is neutral? Pretty good. Yeah, that'll go up and down. And we have another worker free. Back to stone cutting. And now we're ready to build our manor. This is going to be awesome. So we've got a road here, which we could probably connect through and build our manor on top of that. So we'll build it right here. In the middle of all this. I think we'll uh, rotate it. This is the big moment of truth. I'm trying to think exactly where we want it to be. What we want it to look like. And that certainly seems to be the best place, I think. Boom. Welcome to the Castle Planner. This is a work in progress feature. Here you can edit the layout of your castle and plan the construction of new wings and towers. When, you're, when you press commit... The old layout will disappear and the new one will be constructed. For now, the cost is also fixed. All right, very nice. Now, this reminds me a little bit of Foundation, which is a game where you can build manors and cathedrals, churches, and taverns and whatnot, all in a custom form just like this. Now, uh, everything will be expensive for us, so we're uh, going to want to start small. We want to build a tax office so we can get that money. That's going to be important. And then we need to build walls and such around it. So it'll take some time for our people to construct all these things. There we go. We've got ourselves an outer tower. That could, we can build that for defense. Let's build our gate. Walls and gates. Too far from other modules. Might have to build it out from the tower. Uh, let's see. I think we want our outer tower facing inwards. There we go. And we should be able to build the wall attached to that, I believe. Something like that. Ah, oh, this expands our territory to build around that. Wow, very neat. So we can also reset. Work in progress, I guess. But we can move things that way. Ah, oh, very nice. So we can click and drag. And create kind of an extra... Uh, extendo territory around that. 
Let's build our wall here. And of course this will take planks, so... It's something we're going to need to worry about. We have our garrison tower. Which will be right in the middle. And it looks like... Even though we don't have enough goods, we can put that wherever we want. So we'll put that right in the middle of the camp. See if we can rotate that. Uh, drag to relocate. Rotate selected. I'm going to try to grab that arrow. Uh, we can also add points. Okay, I'm just trying to see all the controls here on the left side. The first time doing this since the upgraded demo. And I kind of like it, honestly. Let's leave the tower as is. We'll make that wall like that. And we'll go ahead and build a set of walls from here. Nice thing is, is even though we're kind of building at 90 degrees, the game will automatically uh, kind of bend that for us so it doesn't look so weird. Build something like that if we want to. But I think we could do better than that. That looks nice, though. Very, very nice. We build our outer tower here. Dot. Rotate selected. Can we uh, delete these maybe? Oh, we can also place roads inside. Excellent. All right. It's a little bit of a learning opportunity here. But I don't think we can uh, undo that. So unfortunately, there's no undo feature. So if we don't like that, we'll have to rebuild it again. So we can cancel this if we want to. And we'll do it again. We'll build that a little bit more like this. Then we'll build our garrison tower. Looks like we can only rotate it once, it seems. There we go. Our tax office. And we'll build our outer tower. Which seems to act a bit like a gatehouse, kind of. There we go. Just a little trial and error, trying out new things. Forgive me, it's been a couple years. But I'm not even worried, that looks nice. Beautiful. Now we're missing something else. Roads. We have to build some roads here. There, that's where we'll make our gate then. Ah, okay, so it'll automatically make a gatehouse through the wall. Okay. So I was expecting it to make the tower like that, but we could delete that later, I believe. Interesting. Or we can move the tower here. Build more of the wall. And turn that into a lovely little gatehouse. Look at that. <laughs> cool. Now we can have the gate reconnect there if we want to. We can grab the edges of the fence. So there's little nodes here to grab too. And we can just kind of snap those into position. Perfect. So we can commit to this, but we need 97 planks and 13... Well, we need 31 out of 13. So we got a long way to go before we get our castle up and running. So that'll be what our fortress will look like in the future. And as you can see, the road's still there. So we know where we're going to build it. Damn. It's going to be a long road to build that. All right, let's get to work. I like that system. A few key features uh, missing that will make that a little easier, like just being able to reset 
and more easily rotate some things, but that could be in place on the uh, early access release. There we go. And we'll connect to the road here. And we'll also have the road behind us here, which I think is close to our trading point. No, that's on the opposite side. But it does show that people who come through the city will either have to go to the trading post or to our manor's uh, fortified position. Kind of cool. All right, I like that. I want to goof around with that more. We now know we're going to need a lot of materials to, uh, to get that. I believe there should be maybe a way to save that as a blueprint. Otherwise... You won't know, but at least we've got the manor there for now. So the uh, things that we're going to add to it won't be there uh, until we can pay for them. So, like they mentioned, we can edit that at any time in the castle planner mode. I definitely want the manor first and then the tax office. And then we'll start building all the other stuff. But by building it like that, we were able to plan out how much space we want around it. And, uh, of course, that might open up the door for other buildings in the future that we'll need to put there. Very nice. Well, we're going to have to start farming too, aren't we? We're going to have to get people cutting wood down there. So we can start clearing that area out for farming. And we'll need to get some more people to do that too. But that's why these plots are incredibly important at the beginning. Very important. And we got so many homes. This is great. Ah, just nice. Oh, happiness still going up. Let's see if we can actually build more than one church. I'm sure it's limited to one per town. No, we could build as many as we want. Interesting. We can also build a tavern, another well. Which probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Underground water. I'll have to build that here. Probably not a bad idea to have more. A pack station. Use this building to set up a barter connection, allowing you to send and receive goods between this and another region in your command. Ah. So it's got to be between our two cities. We could build pastures, a farmhouse, fields. Sheep farms, windmills, and a communal oven. Malt house, clay furnaces, bloomery. There's where our industry is going to come in. And a trading post, too. Enables trading with traveling merchants and trade points. Regional wealth is the currency used for trade. Four to construct that. Might be about time we do that. I think that used to be the only way to import uh, oxen back in the day, or... Maybe a, a way to get sheep. So I can remember it was important, but the importance doesn't seem as uh, critical now from what I can recall. But still important to be able to trade, especially if we have excess of something. Let's build that too. And materials should be starting their delivery to the uh, manor, which will be done with the highest of priority. So, the manor house will be constructed today. If all things go according to my non-existent plan, then it'll go all according to plan. Ooh. It's almost March. Well, it's January, but I already see some thawing going on. A light winter. Storage is full in the storehouse. We're going to have to build another one. Looks like the problem here is that we've got so many weapons and stone. 
Is that true? We have 84 stone. Ooh, okay. Cut back on the stone cutting. And a new family has joined. Excellent. That means we're going all in on the logging. We're going to cut down more trees and provide a lot of logs now. And then we'll start going into the saw pit. Start providing more of those. Oh man, things are really starting to move. And here comes Fritz delivering more beams. Logs to be made into beams. Good. Oh man, our first manor is going to be outstanding. Of course, it can be upgraded to have stone and whatnot in the future. Uh, maybe glass will be important. Maybe shingles or tiles will have to be provided too for the upgrades. The building will get larger, so it'll take more wood for the framing on the inside. And maybe planks too for the flooring. Uh, and for support beams with the timber. Who knows? But it's going to be cool to see the recipes. I'm very excited to see what they are and then construct them. Storage is full. Woodcutters lodge. Oh, we made too much firewood. I will right, we'll scale back on that. And we're letting the meat meat deposit replenish. Good. We'll just hold off for a little bit. We have two people free. Saw pit would be a great pl uh, place for him. All right, more at the logging camp. Doing some great work now. Oh, they're clearing all that land. We're going to build our mill up there, if you can recall. I do wish there was some sort of tool to maybe uh, dictate which trees could be cut down and which ones can't. So that way, just like in other games, like I mentioned, with Foundation or Banished or uh, maybe even Farthest Frontier, where you can actually tell which trees are permitted to be cut down or which one you want them to prioritize. And that's good for land clearing for tasks like our farming. Here, right now, it, it's fine to cut down anything. It will regrow. But we want as much... Uh, land cleared as quickly as possible the bandits stole 13 firewood okay they did us a favor they cleared out the storehouse a little bit thank you kind sir <laughs> they're working for us now those who were supposed to stop us and try to hinder us are now employees they now work for manor lords llc look at that can't wait to build our mill up there Okay, well, farming. If we build our windmill, I think this would be a good spot right up here. So that's good. We could start with fields. To employ peasants in the fields, you'll need to build a farmhouse. So we should probably do that first then. And it only costs three wood to do so. Oh, I love how they show us the uh, uh, fertility so we don't accidentally build over like the most fertile of soil. Our lands over here are much more uh, fertile though over to our west. Look at that. Yeah, that's where we want to go next. That That's going to be our main goal. That's where we want to head out to. And the right side here not looking too bad either, at least in some spots, but yeah. We probably got the least uh, beneficial spot for farming, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's like tier. It's like good instead of great. So not bad. Let's see if we can build some farm fields on this slope here as well. And I think we'll build our farm right here. Perfect. Well, the Lord's Manor should be under my house, my personal home. will be under construction soon. Oh, remember, they got to bring over those painfully slow transportation of uh, stones one by one. Raiders near. We've received reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby lands. Should we track their steps? Track their movements, prepare for the attack, or we'll be ready. They'll be attacking in a year. Another raider army was spotted. A ruler's army was spotted. Oh. Oh. Oh, no.
Wow. Look at that. That's incredible. We're not going to be ready to take that on by any means. These guys are fully kitted out. Look at that. Axes, shields, helmets. But well, we did survive the first year. That's what that marker meant. That little blip. A steam achievement. Look at this. Hope these guys are nowhere near us. Looks like his army has entered the field. Oh boy. And we're nothing. We're just a little fledgling village right now. He's going to have to come all that way to attack us, although I think he's just going to defend his territory and is starting to build up defenses for our eventual attack. That's crazy. Wow. Our first sight at military units in Manor Lords. That's insane. I'm speechless. I really don't know what to say. That was really cool to see. Now, if only it was our own army, that would have been much better. Wow. Okay. New family moving in. Good. Got 11 families out of 16. Got to build that tax office soon and our trade depot, see if we can send something out. Got to get some cash. Let's speed up time again. Back to March. It is spring, which is our first year. Come one, come all. Feast your eyes on our fine selection. Ooh, lots of people are joining now. This is great. Beautiful music, too. And look at the land thawing out. Even rain still. Ma'am? Wow. Okay. Well. I think everything's going okay. We just need to wait, although we do need to prepare for an attack, which will be, well, basically when they appeared the last year at that time, just before the turn of the year. We're going to need to build another storage. Let's do just that. Alright, we're building another storehouse. Some things are getting a little too wet being laid out left out in the cold and on the ground just uh, stone now to be delivered we must get our population up to get more people in that militia we started with the weapons so we at least need to hit 40 in order to uh, possibly fight back and I don't know if the enemy is going to send all of those troops to us it would be a little unwise to send your entire army. You never know. A wise leader would be a little hesitant to send everything at once. So it's time to speed things up. Sixteen logs there. Hopefully not too far from the market. It's just down the street, but we can always build another one. But at least the houses are facing this road, so the walk to the market is not so long. Let's 
get somebody on foraging again now that it's spring hunting's going well build the storehouse next rather than the manor because then they can help with the um, delivery of stone if we have two storehouses storing stone we can increase our storage capacity and our delivery speed we can also hire another person there too that'll help out a little bit How are we doing on food again? There we are. 64 berries, 47 meat. Things are not too bad there. Alright, food we're well ahead on. Let's increase storage output. And get those houses built too. Now I hope our growth is exponential because as we get more and more people in the camp we'll provide more goods and can build homes faster. And the protection of the manor's lord yes the manor's lord <laughs> the lord's manor will be uh, important but the protection of the the lord as in our, us and our manor is important. Like to be able to see the manor and to see the Lord are two, two like very impactful things for our people. Like that's kind of what you want to do, is be present and build structures. Look at this, plus eighty percent now. Wow. Damn near one hundred percent approval rating. Good. And we'll be building our trading post there too. Go ahead and put that on a high, and we'll put the manor on the next setting. Medium. And the well will be on low priority. Wow, we're going to be attacked in 300 days. This is our first experience with warfare and how it works in Manor Lords. I was just thinking, too, Manor Lords would be a fantastic game to also have a game mode that's like a, a battle simulator where you could take different types of troops and spawn them onto the battlefield for practicing these battles without having to play through the whole game. And, uh, you know, then you'll be able to uh, minimize and maximize casualties of the enemy and of yourself based on what types of mixes you bring into the battle to find out how effective archers would be or how effective cavalry is and really what the numbers are to overpower the enemy. Would uh, 10 cavalry be enough to push out 40 enemies, that type of thing? Or could you be, how effective is rushing cavalry into uh, archers? Like obviously it's gotta be very effective, but how much so? Can it make the enemy rout? And it would be great to just have some sort of a, a battle editor or maker because this game is so beautiful and uh, I think it would scratch a lot of people's itches when it comes to something along the lines of Total War, that those battles, kind of on a smaller scale, I think there was maybe about 100 people or so attacking us uh, that arrived on the field, perhaps. But we shall see. New mercenary companies available. Almost time. Footmen, spear militia, that's pretty much all we can muster at the moment. We can hire mercenaries too. I love our church bell. It represents our town very well. New family moving in. Yeah, exponential growth. And there goes our storehouse. Let's go back to speed times four, it looks like. So one, four, and probably, oh, 12. The top speed is very fast. I would appreciate some uh, more uh, 
different speeds there. All right, the storehouse is complete. Add another person to that. It's getting dark out now. Lots of rain coming. You can hear it. Listen to that. Music's great, too. Meat. Oh, look at this. They've been able to clear a lot of that territory. <laughs> Berries bursting with flavor. Forty-nine timber, twenty-five planks, seventy-seven stone. Wow, the stone mining went very quickly. Didn't need to mine stone for very long at all. That's effective. Woodcutter Lodge. Ninety-six. We'll keep that going year-round. I feel like there's so much going on, even though it's a su such a small village. There's like so much little management to do here and there, and really just got to monitor everything as it as it happens. Very important to keep things flowing and going. Storehouse there with more capacity and more speed of transporting things around. Oh. Population growth as well as the morale of the militia. So the happier people are at, in the village, the more effective they'll be at fighting as well. I wonder if there's a way to actually see enemies' uh, enemies stats. Oh, there. That might be morale right there at the top. That white bar. Oh, these are uh, local thugs, though. These are not really... These are not really a big army. So our militia might actually be able to take them on. Their effectiveness is 94%. And where are they exactly? Well, they're far from us. But they're moving into new territories. They're surely starting to claim more. It is certainly advised to build your manor as soon as possible, too. But, uh, I mean, you could try to plot it down and try to get supplies to it. But then you won't have much city growth. So it's really a fine balance. And I think building the economy is first. It's hard to get people into a military when they have nothing to fight with and no one, no one to fight for. And that morale is a good point of that. Where if we don't keep the citizens happy and build a large population, then we're not going to have much of an army and not a motivated army. Props, crafting materials, commodities... Trade Depot, I think, is next. Oh, it's almost done. Trade Depot is being completed. A oh, little bit of a oops there. That's all right. Solid as a rock. And made of wood. So beautiful to watch the building construction in this game. Let's keep building. That should be ready soon. Another new family has moved in. And another firewood stall. Excellent. More stalls to give more goods to more people. More. Eventually, whoever moves in next, we might keep them unemployed just to then move in and work at the uh, Trader Depot if it requires someone, which it probably does. Then we'll try to get some money, and then that will help us to get more food, which hopefully will get that rating up 
And with more mo more people means more money, more taxes that way. And then that means we can actually hire people for the military too. Another thing we haven't covered is money, finances with the military, both in wages to train and to pay for their work and then to uh, acquire more weapons or other things as well. Like that's a whole, whole different budget thing right there. Another food stall complete. Wow, the pressure's on with the invading armies. Now, of course, remember, if you're not into the whole, ooh, I'm about to be crushed thing and have to prepare defenses, then, of course, there's the uh, peaceful mode that allows you to take all the regions uh, without any of the conflict, but still, I think, using things like uh, influence and the king's favor and finances. Money makes a lot of, a lot of things happen, doesn't it? Ah, yes, we have our farmhouse, too. More stone needing to be delivered there. Oh, it looks like one more timber needing to be delivered. And it looks like Fritz is on it. Fritz is moving and shaking. I'm really tempted to build some more roads here behind these houses. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh. Pretty. I want to make sure we don't go through the uh, s stone pile there too much. There we go. And that should be the edge of town. We don't want to build over our stone deposit. Oh, there's actually eight stone remaining there. But yeah, we don't want to build over that and destroy it until it's completely depleted. And maybe, possibly, there's a building we could build over that. This is just kind of a stone cutter that might mine on the surface, but perhaps there's a quarry or something that could dig down deeper. We'll err on the side of caution. We have ourselves a trade depot. Almost done. One more log. There it is. Fritz heard our call. Good to see you. That also contributes to the uh, completion of the project. Oh, great to see food and other things going up. The happiness and whatnot. Uh, keeping everybody like pleased at the start. Getting that number up. Very difficult at the start of the game. To do that really is like moving a mountain. But we did it. We moved mountains here. Manor Lords, let me move a mountain. Dude. Almost done up there. Let's get ready to do a little bit of our decoration. Clearing a little spot with our... With our road. There we go. I like how there's still brush here. Makes things look really good. Wow, look at that, too. Uh oh, another bandit camp. This is getting crazy. But also, the enemy's going to have to fight through the bandits, too, because I don't think the bandits are aligned to the enemy. So, the brigands that are here and the enemy army are maybe two different factions that we'll have to fight against. All right, we'll cut down more of those trees. And we'll get ready to build our mill up there. Farming will be another task. Trading post done. What can we trade? Order a new horse. Let's see. Well, we do have a surplus of planks, so we could export. After paying to establish a trade route, a dedicated traveling merchant will regularly visit your region to trade only this specific type of good. I think we'll have to stock that. We can also give permanent connection to a livestock. 
That's interesting. It says livestock, but... Hmm. It could be a horse, but it uh, only shows an oxen, so perhaps we can use a horse in the future. Let's see. It doesn't say what that is. I'd like to see a little bit more info. Oh, there's our horse. Well, we might be able to use him then. Oh, we can rename him here. Well, we have Fritz, and we'll have to name some other hawks, and there's got to be a way to rename these. Okay. Stock's good for sale. I think if we have anything here, we could at least export it. Oh. Minor trades are always traded, but the bottom ones will need major trades to be established. So route required for roof tiles and blocks. So that's something we could export, but we'll need to establish a trade route for that. Because this says we need the route required, so we'll have to purchase that. But here, I guess a permanent trade route is maybe better deals and more frequency. Something like that. Desired surplus. We'll go with 40 meat. Export. And keep 40 berries. Materials. We can export firewood. We'll keep 80. And I don't see planks here. So I guess that's not as important to everyone. We have 72 hides. We need money mostly now just to get things going. So I'm going to try to export anything and everything that we have in surplus. Speaking of honey too, let's get that started. I noticed that on the list. Maybe we can also trade that. We now can finally build an apiary. And it might be a good idea to build that near the uh, farms. I'm not sure if there's any sort of... Um, What would you call it? A benefit or a bonus to building that near the farms? But there could be a reason to do that. And exporting bees, which are kind of uh, honey or wax for candles, that's going to be a good thing, and we could export that. So we might be able to export the honey, maybe the wax for people to make candles. We'll see. Let's build a few of those. I feel like we could also build the training... Uh, post closer to town, but uh, I think the idea here is just to make it short as possible for the trader when they come through. Again, I'm basing some of this off the vague knowledge from the demo. And even with all of you, I rewatched my videos as well, and there's so much to this game. You know, that's why I reposted a lot of the tutorials that we had for Manor Lords from before, because even I had forgotten all the complexity of this game and how long it takes to do things and uh, how to do them and how they get done once you've kind of completed a first stage. Well, we've at least started on our manor, but we've got a long way to go in order to uh, get that constructed. So we've kind of laid it out. Materials are being delivered. Those 15 stones are going to take quite some time, but we're going to start building that, uh, I think, farmhouse next and see if we can start farming by the end of the year. So let's go ahead and make that the highest priority right now and get the farm started. And then we'll uh, try to build ourselves a little, uh, a little bit of a, a windmill. Let's go ahead and also... Wow, look at how many logs they cut down here. I hope we don't lose our supply if we move that. Wow, okay. Let's try to build a mill. And we'll lay that out too. Look at that. Oh, windmill efficiency, yeah, because of all the trees around. We got that almost 90% effective. That's pretty good. Can we get it any higher? 
Wow, 90%, I'll take that. That's pretty good. If we cut down more trees around, it could increase it even further. So we'll plop that there too. Efficiency up. Excellent. Good. That was even a good bonus that popped up. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is it for today's episode of Manor Lords. Join me here for episode four next time. Thank you very much for subscribing, leaving a like. Don't forget to turn on that notification bell, and I'll see you for more next time. Another army was sighted. They're on the way. Here we go.